Here we go. Let's find out what you think. Oh boy, you gonna take right in? Is my girl. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jessica. I'm the Furry Family Coach. Thank you so much for being here. In this video, we're going to be making a recipe from Dr. Judy Morgan's book, Yin and Yang Nutrition for Dogs. I love this book and there are so many great recipes. It covers so many health disorders, uh, feeding for personality type, feeding hot and cold foods, warm foods, so many wonderful things about traditional Chinese medicine. We're feeding for health instead of using medication or along with using medication, definitely consult your veterinarian. Um, Dr. Judy Morgan also does consultations, so that's another great option. But uh, we're gonna be making a recipe out of this book in the description below, you will find a link to get your own copy of this book. Today, I'm gonna to be making a recipe for my dog. So my dog, Kim, you've seen her in lots of videos on this channel. She normally eats and answers raw food diet. And that's just a typical everyday meal for her. But dogs, just like us humans, really, it would be best if we didn't eat the exact same meal every single day of our lives. Now, Answers is a wonderful company. A one, they make amazing foods, fully balanced. I know that Kim is getting all of the nutrition that she needs, but it's okay to switch things up every once in a while, um, just to make things, just to give her something different to eat. And so in this video, we're actually gonna be making the Earth Diet because Kim is an Earth dog based on the fact that she has a yellow coat. So it says here, it says here, yellow or tan coated dogs are generally earth animals, tending towards obesity and a friendly, mellow attitude. An example would be a yellow Labrador retriever or my dog Kim. Earth is ruled by digestion. Digestion feeds the muscles which support the body. Imbalances will predispose these animals to digestive disorders, anorexia, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, obesity, muscle atrophy, weakness of the limbs, edema, chronic hemorrhage. Dampness is the enemy of the earth and digestion. Warming, drying herbs can be added to any diet to nurture this element, such as cinnamon, garlic, ginger, turmeric. Yellow foods feed this element. Re recommended foods include green tripe, lamb, chicken, pumpkin, sweet potato. It also says non-GMO corn, but my family and I stay away from corn, so we're not going to be feeding corn. Avoid processed foods like you would with any animal, including yourself. Avoid processed foods like feeds like. These animals should have rumen, green tripe, and spleen included in their diet. These animals benefit from massage and muscle strengthening exercises. So that's just one tiny little excerpt from this amazing book. Again, there is a link in the description below to grab your copy. That way you can create a, a, a meal plan for your dog based on their specific needs. This book has healthy diets, weight loss diets, um, treating skin damp heat, let's see. Uh, oh, diet to build liver blood, liver disorders, pancreas disorders. There's even recipes for bone broth. So many wonderful things. It teaches you about hot, cold, warm, neutral foods, and I really recommend it. So definitely grab your copy, but let's get right into this video and making this meal for my dog, Kim. This is an incredibly simple recipe. There's literally only five ingredients. It is a recipe that I wouldn't necessarily feed her every single day, uh, but on occasion, this is gonna be perfectly fine. What we're gonna do is start out with one pound of lamb. Now, you could use chicken. The recipe actually says one pound of chicken or lamb, and if you're gonna feed this raw, you can include the bone. I have decided, because Kim eats raw meals every day normally, that I'm gonna go ahead and cook this for her just to give her something a little bit different. So we're gonna start out with one pound, and I picked up some ground lamb. If you didn't, uh, if you can't find lamb that's already ground, you can ask your butcher um, or you can grind it yourself if you have a meat grinder. I know the KitchenAid um, mixer has a meat grinder attachment, so that might be something to look into if you need to grind meat often. I'll put a link below to the grinder. I do think it's gonna be good for grinding meat, 
not necessarily bone. So uh, just so you know that going in, definitely do your research based on what you need. So let me go ahead and get this lamb opened up. Okay, so in my large bowl, I'm gonna take one pound of ground lamb. Again, the recipe says lamb or chicken. So um, I just happen to be able to find lamb at my local grocery store. If you can't, you can use chicken. So I've got my ground lamb, and then it says eight ounces of either sweet potato, butternut squash, or fresh pumpkin, cubed or processed. So I don't know about you, but my dog is pretty picky about eating vegetables. She will eat sweet potato, especially if it's mashed. But I decided instead of cubing it for this recipe, I went ahead and I used the grater to make it kind of smaller. So it's gonna, it's gonna wind up blending into the meat a little bit better. So I've got an eight ounce sweet potato. And then we're gonna take four ounces of dark leafy grains, chopped or processed, kale, spinach, collards, mustard, or dandelion greens. Um, based on what was available at my local grocery store, I went with spinach and I did chop that up. And we're gonna add two ounces of shiitake, maitake, or reishi mushrooms, chopped or processed. So I, I had shiitake mushrooms available at my local grocery store and I did chop them up pretty fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the bowl. And then the fifth and final ingredient is one teaspoon of ground dried either cinnamon or ginger. And I decided to go with ginger. So let's get that added. So now all we're gonna do is mix these five ingredients and I'm gonna mix them with my hands. Um, if you have a mixer that you would like to use that's good for mixing meat and vegetables, you can do that. I'm just gonna use my hands to try to get everything blended together. Uh, now, according to the recipe, uh, Dr. Morgan says, uh, you can grind all of this and mix it together. You can cook it at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 to 45 minutes in a loaf or square baking pan. You can also cook it on low in a slow cooker for four to six hours, or you can just go ahead and feed it raw. And if you have a dog who is not terribly picky about veggies specifically, then I mean, I would encourage you to go ahead and feed it raw. There's nothing wrong with that. There is also included in this book, because this is the number one thing I get asked when I do recipe videos on YouTube, is how much to feed my dog. So included in this book, again, the, the link for this book is in the description below, there is a feeding, a recommended feeding chart. And um, it, she does remind you in the book to feed based on ideal weight and not necessarily current weight. So if your dog is, say, 24 pounds, but you know your vet has told you that their ideal weight is, say, 21 pounds, then you would feed for 21 pounds and not 24 pounds. Uh, so that's kind of how that goes. But as I'm mixing and blending this all together, of course my hands are going to get messy and that's okay. That's what soap and water is for. But while I'm mixing this all together, I do want to know why you clicked on this video. Go ahead and scroll down to the comment section below this video. I would love to know what brought you to this video. Let me know about you and your dog and your dog's situation, what you have going on. Um, I love, love, love when people decide to go ahead and make food for their dog because I know from experience it's not a far step, it's not a far cry from going ahead and switching completely to a fresh food diet, which is ideal for your dog. I have a lot of videos on my channel about feeding a fresh food diet, including a playlist I created when my husband and I decided to take our dogs completely raw. So we trans transitioned them completely to a raw food diet. So I have a whole playlist about all the things we were learning as we made that transition. So I would definitely recommend you checking that out if you are in that mode where you're like, I know I need to feed my dog a better diet. Um, definitely check out that playlist. I'll link it in the description below. Uh, so now I think I've got this blended pretty well together. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands. And while I'm doing while I'm doing that, um, if you haven't already commented below and let me let me know what 
drew you to this video, I'd love for you to do that. I also want to encourage you to join the group, join the family. There's a link in the description below. We are all waiting for you. There are thousands of pet parents just like you who are in this group. Um, whether you are joining for uh, advice or encouragement on transitioning your dog to a fresh food diet or if you need help with positive reinforcement dog training we've got you covered so definitely check out the group so that you can introduce yourself a little more properly and let us help you if you need the help the, again that link is in the description below so i'm going to go ahead and wash my hands and we'll continue with this video okay now that i've got clean hands what we're going to do is take our mixture and move it into a baking dish because i have decided that i'm going to put it in the oven for that 35 to 40 is it 35? Yeah, 30 to 45 minutes um, because dinner is not too far away. Kim's going to be hungry and want dinner. So I'm going to put this in the oven. Again, you could feed this raw. I know my dog. I know that she is not a huge veggie lover. So for me, trying to feed this to her raw, I don't think would go over very well. So I am going to cook it and get those um, veggies cooked in to the meat. And then we'll go from there. So I've just got it in a baking dish now, my glass baking dish. I love this baking dish, it is so versatile. It's not too big, it's not too small. I use it for cakes, I use it for brownies. Obviously I use it for um, pup loaf, or actually Dr. Judy Morgan is very well known for her pup loaf. That's like one of her, her most famous recipes, which is why I chose not to make it tonight because I wanted to make something a little bit different for you guys at home. Um, but uh, I'll go ahead and call this pup loaf for purposes of this baking dish. So I will also link this baking dish down in the description for you as well because it literally is just like pretty much the only baking dish I go for anymore. So let me go ahead and pop this in the oven, 325 degrees Fahrenheit for anybody who may be outside of the United States, <laughs> it's gonna be in Fahrenheit, um, in 30 to 45 minutes and I'll meet you right back here. All right, so we have got our Earth Diet out of the oven. So now all that's left to do is let it cool off and we can feed it. So I don't think I would recommend feeding this every day forever, but as part of a balance over time diet, absolutely this is going to be a great addition to what you're feeding your dog. Um, I, I know there isn't, there's no organ meat in this and there's also, I'm not sure if there's enough calcium in this, but uh, for it to be a fully balanced diet to be able to feed it every single day. However, like I said at the beginning of the video, uh, Kim eats Answers Pet Food. She gets a fully balanced uh, raw diet every single day. So giving her a treat like this every once in a while is not going to hurt anything at all. Um, this is going to be a great addition to what she's already eating every other day of the week. And it's really a good change of pace for your dog to change up what they're eating. And if you balance over time, even better, go ahead and throw this into the rotation, if you have an earth dog, of course. And um, if you don't, or if you just wanna check out everything else in Dr. Judy Morgan's book, make sure to check out the link in the description below to grab yourself a copy. I definitely recommend you checking it out. There are tons of great recipes in here, depending on it, and she breaks it all out by personality types, cold versus hot, warm, neutral foods to feed. If your dog has a medical condition, like maybe pancreatitis or a liver failure or kidney failure or whatever may be going on with your dog, there are lots of great uh, recipes in here for you to check out. And like I said before, there's also a feeding guide in here. So but, uh, I know a lot of people ask me whenever I post a video how much to feed, there is a feeding guide in here. So make sure you check out the link in the description, get your copy of the book. I absolutely love it and I know you will too. So let's let this cool off and give it to Kim. Here we go. Let's find out what you think. Oh boy, you gonna take right in? Here's my girl. Thank you so much for being here in this video with me. 
if you have any questions at all, please post them in the comments below. Don't forget to check out the link in the description to Dr. Judy Morgan's book where I got this recipe. If you haven't already, look down there at that subscribe button. If it is red, go ahead and click it. When you do, it'll turn gray. When that happens, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select on notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every single time I post a new video. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Share it if you have somebody who would, that you know would love to partake in this recipe with their dog. Oh, real quick before I go, there is gonna be another video popping up right about here. I definitely recommend you checking that out. It's gonna help build that bond between you and your dog. So go ahead and click that video next. Thank you again so much for being here and I will see you in our next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.